All right, well, we are into February, which means March Madness will be here before you know it. And now teams in college basketball are into the final stretch of their regular season. And we are so happy enough to be joined by the head coach of the Akron Zips, John Gross, and one of his star players, big man Enrique Freeman. Nice enough to stop by our studios here at WKYC. What a season for the Zips, 17-5 and five on the year, now 9-1 and one in the MAC, sitting at the top of the conference in first place. And, guys, we appreciate you stopping by. Oh, this it's is, great to be here. I mean, we this is so much fun us. to talk some college yeah. hoops now. Yeah, it's great Coach, to be here. Coach, I, I, I'm going to start with you here. Just what you guys have been able to do, right? First place in the conference. You're sitting all alone. You had a big win on national TV the other night against Toledo. The fact that you guys have been able to do this, just how exciting is this? Is this kind of what you envisioned for this group when the season got started? It's been a lot of fun. Just trying to soak in every day with these guys. You know, we got a lot of guys like him, just great guys. Off the court, on the court, uh, guys that are good students guys that care about winning, they care about each other, they're about the right things. It's just a real blessing. We have one of the oldest teams in all of college basketball with a lot of these guys that returned. You know, Reek's been with us five years, Greg, Mike. It seems like Ali has, even though he skipped one year, he's been there for the last five. So we've got an older group and it's a fun group to work with. Enrique, for you, I mean, this has to be so cool. I mean, you're, you're a Cleveland yeah, guy, yeah. you go down to Akron, you're, you yeah. kind of stay home. The fact that you could see all this, have a chance to you know, play in, a, in another NCAA tournament and, and have yeah. so much success, how much fun are you having? Oh, I'm having a blast. I mean, it's just, it's, I'm having a lot of fun playing with my teammates, playing for coach, and you know, playing for Akron, truthfully, is I'm having a great time. I mean, the guys that I remember we, we talked to you about a year ago, and we were talking about the fact that you had such a special group last year, but yeah. I, I got the sense in talking to you, you also felt like, Hey, you're gonna have a lot of the same familiar faces coming back this yes, year. Yes. You can I, I felt like even last year you knew that this year could really be special. Yeah. Um, you know, going and you know, losing X last year was you know rough for us, not in that way, but you know, knowing we were bringing in Ali, the chances of him being able to play, and not just Ali and GT coming back. I know he's been working hard on the perimeter. Uh, Mike came back. Sammy's coming back. So. Um, it shows a real, a lot of character for guys when you come back, especially after losing and, you know, not finishing the way you wanted to. So I knew going into this season, we were definitely going to be amped up to play. Coach, what is it about this conference? It's like, it feels like this is a grind. No matter who you're playing, where you're playing. I mean, we saw a few weeks, uh, a few weeks ago, about a week ago, you guys go down to Miami of Ohio and you know, your brother's doing a great job down there with the Red Hawks. Like we've seen Central Michigan is doing really well. They knocked off Toledo, but like, the, the, there is like a lot of parity, it feels like, in this conference where teams are, they just beat up on each other. No, it's competitive, and Enrique would tell you that. And we've kind of learned that over the years. I mean, it really, you know, comes down to who plays the best that night. Um, and, and there's no question, you have to honor the process of preparation. You have to have some humility. You have to be the same every day, and that's the challenge, you know, to have. We've talked a lot lately about mental toughness. Um, a friend of mine, Bud Wentz, and I have talked a lot about it. He's close to these guys as well. And just, you know, how important it is to be the same every day. And that's the grind of it. Because it's challenging as human beings or as a team to be the same every day. Have the same desire, the same approach, the same focus. But that's what champions do. And these guys have won a lot of games. They know it takes that. I always tell them it takes what it takes. There's no shortcuts. You know, if you want to win, you have to do these things. Yeah. And we've got a group, I think, that, that understands that. Coach, I know you keep these guys laser focused, but for a second, I'm going to look ahead with Enrique here just for a second. Enrique, do you guys talk about, you know, the, the goals that you guys have, whether it's, you know, winning a MAC championship, yeah. trying to go and play in the NCAA tournament? I know we've got to stay focused on Central Michigan here pretty yeah. soon. But, I mean, do, is, I mean, that's just yeah. reality, right? It's human nature. You guys have to talk about these things as a group. Yeah, I think uh, before, before every season, we go in depth on one of our, our goals of, the season are like what do we want to win a championship you know I know one of our goals is you know making it to the tournament and advancing so uh, we talk about it in the beginning of the season and we really dive into what we want to do and then we kind of pin those goals on the wall and look at them every day to know all right we might not be focusing on those goals right now but every time we go out and play that's what we're trying to reach. Yeah. So. Coach we've talked about it before the MAC um, you know we talked about what a grind it can be uh, I, I'm old enough to remember when this was a two-bid league. I yeah, mean, there's sure. been years where you get a team that's either nationally ranked and then maybe another team wins the conference tournament. You can get two teams in. That's probably what it would take. You put in all this work. You guys right now 9-1 and one at the top of the conference. You're 17-5. and five. People have talked about you maybe somehow sneaking into the top 25 at some point in the country. 
But at the end of the day, it, it almost feels like it comes down to that MAC tournament. For you, how do you balance, hey, the importance of the regular season versus, boy, at the end of the day, you, you may just have to win this, this tournament. Yeah, I think it it's what I said earlier, Nick. It's yeah. being the same every day. We prepare for every game, win or lose. Like we just won Friday, and we came in, we have a film session. How do we get better? What do we need to clean up? So it doesn't matter what we, what we the result. Okay, we know that uh, with the results we want. Rick just mentioned it. We have goals. There's no question about it. We do. But at the same time, we know the best way to reach those is to get caught up in approaching it one day at a time. How do we continue to make ourselves uncomfortable so we can grow and become the best team that we call ourselves Team 123? We're the 123rd team at the University of Akron in men's basketball. I mean, how can we make Team 123 become the best team it could possibly be? And we're just consumed with that, and then the score will take care of itself. We know if we execute, we do our job, we do it for each other, we do it with the right mindset, the right heart, uh, where we care about winning and we care about each other, that the results will take care of themselves, and we're pretty talented. So if we do those things, then our chances to be able to accomplish the goals we want to accomplish long term increase greatly. Enrique, when you're out there, it's hard to, to put this into words, but sometimes there's teams that just have that it factor, right? They, they just got it. Yeah. Do you sense that this team has that sort of special kind yeah. of it factor that just the, the will to just want it more just when you're out there? And obviously talent plays a big part too, yeah. but do you get the sense of that with your teammates? Yeah, um, I think we have tremendous chemistry together as a whole. I think there's times in the game and we're playing and it's like, it's second nature. It's almost first nature on like movements and like, well, I know Ali has a mismatch or Sammy has a mismatch or GT has, uh, he has a bad defender on him and like how we space out. So definitely we have that chemistry, especially on the defensive end. We make up for each other's mistakes. Like we help each other out. Um, and it's rare to find that, especially with a group of five guys or four or five, maybe six guys who've been with each other for a while. So we definitely have that it factor. You guys have built a program. A big reason why is the yeah. guy who's sitting next to you, yeah. Coach John yes. Gross. Um, you know, looking at what Coach and his staff have done, just how, what is it about them that, that just has you guys believing in their message and just yeah. has you always – I know, Coach, you're going to get uncomfortable with me talking about no. you, but I do want to hear about it from one of your student athletes. Like, what is it about this coach, this coaching staff, that has you guys believing night in and night I mean, out? truthfully, I'm, I'm a product – of their coaching and their and their um, basketball, you know, IQ. Coming here as a walk-on, I didn't have the information and the knowledge I needed to be where I am now. And they have done a great job of taking me every season and kind of giving me a look at my game and really, you know, where ways you can improve, where things that you're not good at, how do you get good at those things, and also. To them and also the the players before me, they did the same thing. So having it on, being able to listen and listen to them on their end, but also listening to other players, that, that combination really, really is a true combination of success. I, I think about it, Coach. How cool is this? Right? you got a Cleveland guy right next to you. He's playing at Akron. He's playing for you. Walk on. Now he's without a doubt the best player in the league. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what? this is like full circle. It's, it's, it's such a great story, Enrique it, Freeman. It's, it's an like, amazing story. But, you know, I always tell people when they say, and he is, uh, in my opinion, the best player in the league, but I think he's one of the best players in the country. You know, I really do. I've done it for a long time. I, 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 I've seen his growth and development that he just discussed and what things he, you know, can do after one year, then two, then three, then four, then five, and how he's developed and grown, how his body's changed, how his mentality's changed, his leadership skills, the way he communicates. You know, I think, um, you know, he's evolved into that. And, and I always say Ali as well. I mean, I, I think Ali's one of the best perimeter players in the country. So we're very... You know, very, very blessed. We have a lot of really good players, a lot of talented guys. But I think what separates them, and I use the analogy every once in a while with them, that, you know, you could have a great-looking Ferrari, but if it doesn't have any gas in it, it's not going to – it doesn't do you any good. you got to be able to drive it. You know, same thing. We have talent that what fuels those guys and, and us and our program to the consistent level we've been at is their character. And not just these guys, as he mentioned, the guys before him that really started this – Yep. You know, I call that class with Christian Jackson and Williams yeah. and Reak and Cheese and Banks kind of the trailblazer class. And they really, and these guys have done a great job building on that and continuing to elevate uh, the program. Mm -hmm. I always tell the young guys, I hope they're watching, listening, and embracing a little bit of what these guys uh, are about because there is an expectation of regenerative leadership here, yep. you know, that we've now developed over a five-year period uh, that these guys have been a part of. When you took over this job, 
I mean, you had familiarity with this conference already, but when you came back and, and you, you, you took over at Akron, was this kind of what you envision, a team that's always right near the top, always going to be flirting with the NCAA tournament, a chance to be ranked and go on a run? Like, is this what you envision? Is it playing out? I know yeah, it's hard I mean, to step back when you're in it, but are you able to step back for a second and be like, yeah, this is kind of what I – yeah, no, we envisioned yeah. building something special. We really did. And a, and a program and not one that just was competitive one year or a couple years out of five or whatever. We wanted to do it year because I think that's consistency is the hardest thing to accomplish in any business, right, in athletics. How do you do that consistently at a really, really high level? And so I always give, certainly these guys have done a phenomenal job. But again, that first class credit, because what we were selling to them, none of that had happened yet. <laughs> But yet they believed in that, and they came in and laid the foundation that we've been able to build upon. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, there's no question about it. But it really, again, starts with their character of these guys and who they are on and off the court. I was going to ask you, there's probably some things about this team you could probably still, as a head coach, nitpick and tell us where you could be better. But what, what, what about this team just makes you really proud? How coachable they are, I think, uh, more than anything. And uh, they want to be special. They want to be... They don't want to be just good. They want to be great. And so we, co we coach them that way. And he'll tell you, you know, I, and someone laughed and sent me that he had quoted one of our messages that we don't allow winning to become a deodorant in our program and hide what stinks. Yeah. You know, we evaluate the game based on win or loss. Did we or did we not do our job? How well did we do it? Uh, what are our standards? Are we excelling at a high level, whether it's defensively or offensively or with our teamism or whatever it is? And that's what we evaluate it on. We don't evaluate it based on the opponent or the result. And so we do that day to day. Um, and these guys have really bought into that. You know, when your best player or players like him buy into that, it's Doc Rivers says it all the time. When your best player is coachable and buys in, and he'll let us get on him in film sessions, well, then if you're a rookie in that room, you're like, well, geez, if he's calling Freeman up to a higher level, then I better, I better answer the bell. Yeah. I got to pick it up. I, I'm, I'm going to be held to the same high standard as Freeman. You know? And so that, that is such a blessing uh, that these guys are, are, are like that, that they're that coachable. Enrique, you're here first week of February. Yeah. In about six weeks, the MAC tournament right down the street at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, a chance for you guys to – win a conference championship, go to the NCAA tournament. I'm sure those are all things you've thought about. I mean, the fact that you will be back here at yeah. home, yeah. a chance to do all that, that's got to be pretty special. Lee. Oh, so I'm super excited. I'm excited to do it with my teammates. I'm excited to do it for the community of Akron, for the Rowdies. And I'm excited to do it in Cleveland, too, since I'm from here. So it feels good. It's, it's like a full circle moment, it feels like, Coach. <laughs> yeah. It really it's is. Like, you know, we're all yeah, kind of – No, it definitely, it definitely is. It's really, uh, it's really neat. And, obviously, Reek's family means a lot to him. He's got a phenomenal support system and family. And the fact that they get to basically be at every home game and, honestly, the majority of the road games <laughs> and neutral games as well and uh, is really cool yeah. uh, that they get to be a part of that and sharing this experience with him, being that he's local and from Cleveland. So that's really – you know, really a neat thing. All right, last thing for you. I, we'll talk a little business for Tuesday. Tuesday night, you guys take on Central Michigan. If people haven't followed the MAC, the Chippewas have had a pretty nice season. They beat Toledo at home. Right now, it's another battle for first place. You guys just had one at your place. You got another one. Uh, what, 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 what sticks out to you about them, and, and what do you have in front of you? Just how hard they play and how physical they are. They embody Tony's personality. I've known Tony for a long time. He does a really good job. They've, uh, you know, really shifted to more man-to-man. -man from matchup zone in years past and they're physical and they get into you and they make you really uncomfortable. And, you know, then they try to isolate matchups and we've got to do a good job, uh, you know, with our, with our game plan and our execution of the game plan. But the thing that stands out to me most is just their physicality. They were a team, Nick, that was picked last. So you can tell when you're watching them, they got a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. You know, the other day they played Bowling Green, who's one of the better teams in our league at Bowling Green and had their first and third leading score out didn't play at all, and won the game in double overtime. And you could tell from watching it the guys had a chip on their shoulder. Wow. So we're going to have to match that and be ready to play. I think it's one of the things he'll tell you we've talked about a lot is that we have a bullseye on our back. I was just going to say that. So <laughs> it, it is what it is. We've embraced it, right? We're not hiding from it. Uh, we love that challenge. We love to compete. And we understand that when we play someone in our league especially, we're getting their best shot. You know, we are. Uh, and we should relish that and embrace that. And for the most part, I think these guys have. Enrique, can you sense that when you're out there yeah. you're getting everyone's best shot and there's, yes. there's a total target on your yeah, guys' back? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we, 
you go into you go into film sessions and you go, well, you know, this guy hasn't hit these shots, but we know when they play Akron, you know, <laughs> they might hit those shots because they're excited to play us. So, you know, we we kind of take that as a challenge. You know, we want to play everybody at their best. You know, we want to we want to win at everybody's best. So we definitely. Well, Use listen, that. we wish you guys the best of luck. We appreciate you coming down to our studios. It has been fun yeah. following you guys over the last few years. Coach, you have built a phenomenal program. It's been fun to follow locally, and now you guys are getting some national attention. So we wish you all the best. We'll see you here in Cleveland, I know, in a few weeks, and uh, we can't wait to see how this all wraps up for you. Yeah. No, I appreciate Thank it, Nick. You. It's Thank great you. to be up Thank here you. in Cleveland, and we appreciate your, you following us like you guys do. John Gross, Enrique Freeman from the Akron Zips.